centuries before the Targaryen conquest of Westeros, when the Valyrian freehold ruled much of western Essos. The city of Braavos was founded in a northern lagoon by runaway slaves fleeing their Valyrian masters. Fearing reprisal from the dragon lords, the former slaves kept the existence of their city hidden for over a century, giving them time to properly establish their settlement. A group of these settlers, specifically 16 men and 7 women, discovered an iron mine, using it to conceal their riches from pirates and thieves. Over time, the amount of treasure they collected became sufficient enough for some of them to start lending the money out to other Bravosi. From there, the Iron Bank of Bravos took root, led in part by 23 key holders, who were the descendants of the original founders of the bank, and who continued to hold keys to the subterranean vaults which hold their wealth. Key holders are held in high regard within Bravosi society, known to wear their keys on chains around their necks during ceremonies and celebrations. However, they are not alone in the management of the bank, with many other nobles and rich merchants owning shares in the organization, allowing them to attend secret meetings and have a voice in choosing the leadership. Although the city itself is led by the Sea Lord of Bravos, bank officials have a great deal of influence. After a century hidden from the world, Sea Lord Uther Ozalin prepared to end the secrecy. In order to preemptively make peace with the Valyrian Freehold, he sent envoys from the Iron Bank to make contact, learning that the Valyrians cared little for a faraway city founded by fugitive slaves a century earlier, and they were further placated when the Iron Bank paid a generous sum to the descendants of the slave owners whose ships had been seized and stolen. The representatives of Bravos did not, however, offer any compensation for the slaves themselves. With the issue settled, the Sea Lord of Bravos sent ships to every corner of the world, revealing the existence of Bravos in what came to be known as the Unmasking of Uthero. Over the centuries, the Iron Bank grew into the richest and largest bank of the free cities, lending money to many triarchs, princes, noble lords, and even kings, becoming a source of financing for the Seven Kingdoms of Westeros. Yet part of the reason for their success came from the reputation they earned in dealing with those who refused to pay their debts. The bank became infamous for toppling delinquent lords and princes by financing their rivals, who in turn agreed to pay back the full debt of the previous ruler in addition to what they borrowed to overthrow their predecessor. In cases where this strategy failed, assassins were sent to eliminate the guilty parties. The bank's long-standing relationship with Westeros served them well for many years. Like during the Dance of the Dragons Civil War, when Sir Tyland Lannister of the Green Faction following Aegon II sent one quarter of the crown's gold from the royal treasury to the Iron Bank for safekeeping. A few years later, however, the Iron Bank declined in power, with the Roger Bank of Lys rising to prominence, seeing the head of the bank's daughter, Lara Roger, marrying Prince Viserys of Westeros, who went on to become King Viserys II. However, after the death of Lara's father, Lysandro the Magnificent, the bank started to decline and the Iron Bank once again returned to prominence. In 267 AC, the Mad King Ares II was at odds with the bank over debts accrued by his father, Jaehaerys II. And so he foolishly claimed he would build a mighty fleet to bring the Titan of Bravos to its knees. Yet this was just another of the king's many declarations that led to nothing. After the fall of House Targaryen, King Robert Baratheon ruled for many years, accruing debt through his reckless spending with Peter Baelish, Master of Coin, responsible for securing the funds. With Robert's untimely death, the kingdom's debts fell to the heir King Joffrey Baratheon and King Tommen Baratheon after that. However, with the War of the Five Kings raging across the continent, Queen Regent Cersei Lannister, who ruled in the name of her young son, felt she needed to prioritize military spending over debt, and declared they would defer payments to the Faith of the Seven and the Iron Bank of Braavos until the war was over. With the funds they saved, she ordered the construction of a naval fleet to be led by the bastard of Driftmark, Orain Waters. Grand Maester Pycelle proved the only member of the small council to object to the plan, reminding the Queen of the famous saying, the Iron Bank will have its due, and explaining that this will have drastic repercussions, though his pleas are ignored. And so, when Noho Demidis was sent by the Iron Bank to King's Landing, Cersei informed him of the decision and sent him away. 
In response, the bank started calling in all its outstanding debts from the Lords of Westeros and stopped giving out any new loans, leading to economic chaos throughout the continent. In addition, they sent Tycho Nestoris north to the Wall in search of King Stannis Baratheon. At the Wall, he met with Jon Snow and agreed to lend the Night's Watch coin to help them survive the winter. Tycho was then escorted south to Deepwood Mott, where he paid the ransom for a number of ironborn captives so they might escort him safely to find Stannis near Winterfell. Instead, they at last found Stannis in a small village. Tycho Nestoris then negotiated a contract to financially support Stannis Baratheon for the Iron Throne in exchange for the repayment of all previous debts once in power. Stannis agreed and demonstrated his commitment by signing the agreement in his own blood. Back in King's Landing, Cersei's schemes at last became her undoing when she was arrested by the Faith Militants and stripped of her power. Sir Kevin Lannister was then named Regent and did his best to reverse some of the damage already done. He attempted to secure new loans from the banks of Pentos and Mir, but was unable to secure financing. He then suggested that Sir Harry Swift, Master of Coin, go to Bravos so he might speak with them directly and re-establish a relationship. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Fabian Keen Eye Flowers, Jory Redblade, and Midori Senin. If you'd like to help the channel with a monthly donation, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to see more.